All right, so we have already covered, I believe, the if statement, right? If statement is a branch. When condition is satisfied, we execute this uh, statement. So if we look at this example, if x is greater than zero, we do square root. Otherwise, we may output some error messages. So that will be a simple example. And uh, here are some operations. I believe you guys already know that. And uh, remember this one, right? I emphasized many times, do not confuse uh, double equal versus assign, right? So let's go to here. So if we want to uh, compare a floating point numbers, we said when r uh, equals the square root of two, it is some number close to square root of two, right? Because it's not accurate. It cannot store infinite number of digits. So that's the approximate. So you cannot say if r times r equals to two, <laughs> it will be false. So it will jump to the else part. So right? if, if, if it is true, go to this part. If it's uh, false, you go to the uh, last part. Which is square root two squared is not a two, but some number. And the number we said uh, here we display two is because the precision of C out, right? If you reset the precision of C out to be a larger number, such as uh, 20, the number will be different, such as, uh, yeah, I believe we have run it uh, in my laptop. So any questions on this? If you will be able to understand this almost, uh, the branch part, the simplest branch part, you are already be very familiar with it. So let's go to some other part. How to compare floating point numbers, right? If we say we cannot use uh, double equal, what can we do? We should allow our computers to have some errors. Right. This is the, we call the round of errors that we must tolerate. It's unavoidable. <laughs> so you can say if x minus y is less than some epsilon, and you can define epsilon to be such as one to the power of, uh, one times 10 to the power of negative 10. It is such a small number. If you will be able to define it, it means r times r is very close to two, right? So you would say r could be a good approximate of square root of two. So here is how we use it. We will use some examples to show uh, show, show the ideas, right? And the blocks, right? Uh, so for the first one, like this, or if the condition equals to two, we only have one segment. Else part, if this one is false, we, all, we also have only one segment. In this case, you don't need something like the braces because it's only one segment, right? It's immediately run this line. And if it's false, it immediately run, run the next line. But the question is, sometimes we have more things to do than just one line. Right. For example, if area is less than zero, we might output some error message first, then return. So if it's more than one line, we need a braces to make it a block. We call it a block. A block can contain as many statements as uh, you like. And each of the statements could be another if statement, right? Another branch. And uh, inside of that branch, you have another block and another branch and so on. All right, so let me show you the example of the code. Never mind. Let me show you the code. What is it? The code? Yeah. to the right. 
then open, let me open another one. Add it. I'm gonna still mute it. So in here we can see how to run it, right? And then we have this file, how to compile it, g++ area.cpp dash o area. Then we have this executable called area, right? So in here, I intentionally uh, comment out this line, right? Uh, initially, we said, please enter the area of a square, right? You're asking the user to input the areas. What if I intentionally comment this one? So when you run it, it's like this. Right? The user don't have any idea what is expected. Is the program still running? Are you waiting for my input? Or is there something wrong, right? So it's always uh, good behavior to write some messages to the uh, terminal or anything so that the user knows what they are, uh, what you are expecting from their side. Right, so you are expecting to enter the area of a square. So you would say 10, how about 10, right? If the area is 10, we see into area, now area becomes 10. And uh, we have a branch it says, if the area is less than zero, it's not, we jump out, right? We jump out of the whole branch. Then we go to uh, compute the land. While we are computing the length, we simply call this function square root of area, then output the length of a, uh, of a square, right? So it's a square root of 10, which is 3.16 and so on. So as you can see, this part is a block, right? We have a race that put all the things you want to do if the condition is true or false. Using one block. Right. So let's try. All right. Let's try to uncomment it. Then recompile it. Then run it. Right. Now when we run, it has a message. Please enter this uh, area of a square. Let's see what if I give a negative number. Right. If I give negative one, now area becomes negative one, and the these conditions are true. So we get inside, we will see out, error, negative area, and then return back, right? <laughs> so any questions on this code? No? Is there a vanish loss? One by one, they will just run it one by one. We will skip all the blocks in there. Yeah, so if there are multiple blocks, we will cover that later. There will be more complex issues. Sometimes we pair one and one with another. Right. Any more questions on this simple example? That's it. Why it stops in the if, right? Why it stops in the if, right? We have a return one, right? We will execute the line by line. Whenever we execute a return one, the whole program returns. Yeah, yes, yes. Anything not equal to zero, we will consider there are something wrong within this code. If your code, if you want to execute, uh, the code and exit, uh, normally we typically return zero. So I will show you how to use this code. Right? So many of you ask me, why do we do this? All right, let me show you. So in a terminal, we can echo the return number of the function, right? When you execute this area, if there are errors, we can return it, you can got one. 
Let's try another one. Uh, weird. Let's try the correct one, right 10. We can echo if the return value is zero. If we execute with something wrong, the return value is one. Right. So uh, this is the one, this is the value you return to someone who calls your function. So uh, with respect to how the user will use, this number, it depends on the user, right? You can write some program saying, okay, if a one happens, <coughs> let me call this program again, and so on. That depends on you. And uh, uh, for now, you just know that they can be used, they can be captured by the terminal, by the program that calls this program, okay? Any more questions? Yeah. No? All right, so next is our styles. If there are multiple blocks, right, for any braces, it's called a block. Not, not only just the ifs, ifs blocks, it also has the blocks for the functions, blocks for classes, and so on. When it is uh, enclosed by a pair of braces, it is a block. And when you are having multiple blocks, it's better to have some intentions like the first one maybe uh the, the, the top top left and then here if you uh before that you have uh, three or four black spaces and so on so that you yeah. are telling the reader of your code that this is the first level this is the second level this is the third, third level fourth level and so on so this is about the styles and I, as i said you can ask your ides to help you with that if you write your code very ugly, you can format the document and they will help you to do something like this. Yeah, here we are already done. Right, this is the solution. And the uh, next one, we want to uh, validate our input. So if we, uh, there are multiple cases, right? If we are <clears throat> expecting the user to input some double or floating point numbers. What if the user gives uh, some input like the five? It's a string five, right? People type in five and it gives return. I believe many of you have uh, experience on this one, right? Like giving some uh, wrong formatted input and uh, see how they will uh, perform. So it's always a good, uh, habit to try to see if our seeing fails or not fails or good, right? So if seeing fails, it means we can ask the user again, please enter another number, right? You can say the format is wrong, what should be the correct format and so on. So we can use seeing to check that. And uh, also the actual input should also be valid, right? Even if the type is correct, even the area, the type is correct, we still want to see if the area is greater than zero or not. If it's less than zero, we, uh, it's not a square, right? It's not an area of a square. So there are multiple ways to do that. And the uh, next one is the comparing the strings. If we want to compare two strings, uh, we, we already know how to compare two characters, right? Yeah, the ASCII code. We can check the ASCII code, the order of the ASCII code, who is uh, greater than the other one. Similarly, we can compare to strings. Like the, uh, there are many rules. The first rule is when it's shorter than the other, and all the, but uh, yeah, let's start from the beginning. We compare one by one, right? We compare C with C. We compare A with A. We compare R with R. Then we compare next, and we say if it's shorter than that one, this one means it's less than. The right hand side. Here is another another example. Right, we start by comparing C with C equal, compare A with A equal, compare R with T. Right. Whenever there's a difference, we stop. We don't need to compare the remains. So C A is exactly the same. We compare R and T. Who is before? 
right? Is R before T or is T before R? So that's the comparison for strings. So exercise, which one is smaller, Tom or Jerry? Jerry. Who is smaller, Tom or Nathan? Tom. Who is smaller? Church. 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 Yeah, because it's capital, right? Uppercase is always smaller than lowercase. Yeah. Next one, car manufacturing. Library. Yeah, because of blank space, right? You need to check the RC code for the blank space. Next one, Harry. 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 <laughs> yeah, C plus plus, car. Actually, I don't know. I need to check the RC code whether class is less than 90 days, 93, right? Class is 93 or not. I believe C plus plus is smaller than a car. Tom and Tom, equal, right? Car and Carl, car. car is smaller. Car and a bar, bar. All right, yeah, great. That's easy, right? All right. So next, we need to combine many of the logic expressions. For example, this one is wrong, right? We cannot. Writing something like this, yes, x between 0 and 100. We were getting the. Uh, is it a compilation error? error? Yeah. No, right? Because the left hand side becomes a true or false, then true or false converted to 0 or 1, then compared with 100, right? It's still uh, past your compilation and it will still give you some number. And uh, yeah, it's always true, right? Yeah, it's always true. Because no matter the first part is true or false, it's always less than 100. So it's always true. Then how should we write it, right? It should be written as 0 less than x and x less than 100. Right? Here's how we write it. We need to uh, combine many of the expressions. And uh, we have introduced the end the or and the uh, not, right? These are the three you will frequently use. You should remember there are two tables. And here there's one difference between the this table versus the previous table I have given to you is this any, right? This any, any means as long as a is false, I don't care what b is, the result is false. This is what any means, and here's not any, right? As long as one is true, another one is always true. We can actually combine them into maybe like smaller ones. Anyway, so yeah. So if you are interested, you can write down the result. I put it as an exercise. I was hoping you guys can do it offline. And uh, I will pass it. All right. So next one is the uh, Boolean operations, right? We have introduced, then how can we use it? So the first uh, first condition is, if the country is in USA and the weight is less than one, the shipping charge would be 2.5. So how can we read it? We can read it by this way, right? If the country equals to USA, if it's true, you check another condition. And if it's false, we directly go to here. And we will check when it's true, we will check its weight less than one. If it's true, we go to the shipping charge part. If it's false, we go to the uh, remaining part. So, so what does it tell you? Is it related, related to something that we have talked about? <laughs> For lazy evaluation, right? Whenever a country not equal to USA, it will not execute the next part. It will directly jump out. Jump out of the whole block. So here, weight is weight less than one. It will not be checked. And we said, if there's a plus plus here, it will not be executed. So that's the lazy evaluation part. It's because of this kind of uh, flow, uh, we call it control flow graph. 
it is decided by the control source. Right? Whenever there's a branch, we can jump either to true or to false. And if it's true, we check another condition. We, check, we normally use this uh, the, uh, diamond to represent a branch. Right? This kind of rectangles to represent some statement. So we should be familiar with this kind of graphs. And similarly, uh, in the next part, if the uh, state equals to hi or state equals to ak, the shipping charge will be 10. So it becomes the control flow graph should like, it look like this. If it's equals to hi, if it's true, if this one is true, we directly jump to the next line, right? Shipping charge equals to 10. We don't need to evaluate the next part because it's true, we goes to uh, goes along these uh, arrows. Right? And if it's false, we will evaluate the right part. If it's not equal to HI, it does it equal to uh is it equal to the EK, right? If it's false, what, what does it do? And what if it if it's true, we still assign the shipping charge to the tank. Yeah, question. Continue to go right yeah, braces. Uh, yeah, as I said, if there's only one line, you don't need the uh, braces. Yeah. You can also put it, it doesn't hurt. Sometimes it's always good to put a braces here. Any more questions? So as a programmer, you should be familiar with this kind of control program. If there's no more questions, let's continue. We said that this is called lazy evaluation because in last lecture, we have uh, talked a lot of uh, plus plus related lazy evaluations about it. I believe you guys are already familiar. So many of you ask me, uh, what's the correct behavior of that? Right? It really depends, actually, it depends on the compilers. Maybe in the future, compiler no longer did that. You will never know. And then the only way to check what's the result of that is what, what it does, but it's it's beyond the scope of the class, so I wouldn't introduce that. I will skip here, skip here, and go to the pairs. Right? You said this is called a pairs, right? True part, false part. So sometimes we will ignore this uh, else part. That's uh, some something we already did, and uh, so let me see if we have another one. Yeah, here. So again, flow chart. First, we go to the condition. Is the area less than zero? False. We jump out of the whole block, right? If it's less than zero, we will print these error messages. Okay, okay your area is less than zero. What you should do, right? And uh, we can also write it in this way, right? Is area greater than zero? We go to two, do some work. If it's false, we do some work. So in the left part, we only have the two part, right? We don't have the false part. In the right hand side, we have both the two part and the false part. Okay. How about this one? Nested branches, right? If everything is nested. The idea is like this. First, we have a number. Then we said, is prime number false? So what is prime number? Yeah, yes. And uh, we say, OK, if number is mod 2, what does it mean? Yeah, number mod 2 is not 0. What does it mean? Right. Number is even odd. odd. All right. Number is odd. So if I write it like this way, number mod two, it means number mod two not equal to zero. Right? Not equal to zero means number is a odd number. One, three, five, seven. Right? And then the else part means it's a even number. And for the even number, it's much easier, right? If it's equal to, to two, it means it's a prime number. Else it's a not a prime number, right? For the else part is easy. And uh, if it's a odd number, 
we need to implement some function to test the prime. Let's ignore this part uh, for now. Assuming test of prime will return true if it's a prime and return else if it's a not a prime. So we can write something like this. So test the prime will return a Boolean, right? Return a Boolean. That function, uh, the input is a number, the output is a Boolean. If it's prime number, returns true. <laughs> if it's not a prime number, returns false. So we can write something like this. As you can see, there are something you need to understand is so this one, right? Because it's only one line, you don't need braces for it. Similarly here, because it's only one line for the else part, you don't need a brace here. And uh, yeah, you can, actually you can also ignore this part. Maybe, let me see, can I ignore it? Yeah, you only match, yeah. You can try to ignore this braces, I believe it can still work. Because in C++, the whole part is one statement. The whole if else part is one statement, so you can still ignore it. But it's a good habit to have this one. If it's longer than one line. If it's longer than one line, use a brace to enclose it. So it has uh, two, two, two blocks, right? For the if part, one is here, one is here. Yeah. <coughs> So any questions on this? How to nest a branch in another branch? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Which um, yeah, I don't have a line number. A a The first line? No, no, no. The first A. The first A? Okay. The first A here? Yeah. Oh, what does it mean by if number mod two, yeah. right? All right. So, uh, number mod two is the remainder of the number divided by two, right? The remainder of a number divided by two, there will be only two options, either zero or one. If it's zero, it's an even number, two, four, six, eight, right? If equals to one, it's an odd number, one, three, five, seven. And uh, this test means if this number not equal to zero, we said any number that equal to zero will become a false. Any number that's not equal to zero will become a true. So if this number not equal to zero, this is the condition. So I should write it uh, in some way like this. Let me see if I can copy it. We have any other one. All right. Uh, I'm going to run it anyway. So, number model two, right? Number model two can be either here, it means number model two equals to one, or we say number model two equals not equal to zero. Yeah, it's ugly. All right, how about this else part? Else part means sometimes it's good habit to have a uh, comment here saying number is even, right? And in here you can say Comment in here something like the number is odd, right? So if you write some code that seems weird, you can put some comments like this. After this branch, you can say this branch means number is odd, and uh, this else part means the number is even. You can put some comments like this. All right? Any more questions? Yeah. Line after second. Second if complex. What's the line? Okay. So this line, it's it's actually calling another another function. Right. I didn't implement this function, but I would say this one equals two. 
but it's exactly the same as ignoring is equal to true power because it itself is a true. So you don't have to say true equals to true returns true, right? So you can say if test the prime and uh, what would it be the test the prime? Test the prime would be somewhere you can define a test the prime. This is a function maybe written by others. Mm -hmm. It will get your input and then return a Boolean function saying, okay, if, if this has the prime, you say true or false. So we can ignore this for now because we haven't gone into the uh, function definition yet. And then uh, anyway, this one will get give you a true or false. So you can say true equals to true, or you can just ignore this true equals to true part. Just to say if true, like this. Any more questions? Yes. The second line, and now it's empty. Oh, it's nine five. Nine five. Okay. Yeah. So we we define a variable line five. We define a variable. The variable's name is is prime, and we assign the initial value of false. Right. Uh, actually, you don't need to assign it because it will be assigned anyway. But just in case it's not assigned, it's better to give it a initializing number. Right. Sometimes you would do something like this because I have already assigned a false to is prime. So anywhere that will be assigned a false, I can remove it. I can do something like this. It will be exactly the same. Yeah. Because I have initialized the is prime to false. I only need to test all the cases that this guy is a prime right? and assign prime to it. <laughs> all the other cases I can ignore. So that's the uh, beauty of assigning an initial value. And we can do more, right? As you can see, these two ifs are testing right after each other. So what we can do is, what we can do is, If this number is a odd number, and we have tested this odd number is a prime, we can assign it prime. Or else, what we can do is if the number equals to two, up to two, we assign s prime to two. It's exactly the same. Yes. Uh, uh, just ignore that. Uh, assuming someone already implemented that, and you can call the function like this: test the prime plus the input. Uh, yes, yes, you will need to do that, and I will discuss that later. Uh, and it depends on where the test of prime is. You can also define the test of prime in the this function, uh, this file. So, is it clear about this? Branch, right? <coughs> yes. Yeah, yes. Yes, you can. You can do that. If the test of prime saying, okay, I can test all the numbers, right? It will be fine. So here I just want to show what, what we can do with the branches, right? We can even do something like this. If number equals two or right if number equals to two we are done it's a, it's a prime if it's not a two 
we test if this one is a odd number. If it's even number, we jump out. If it's odd number, we further test that it is the number of prime or not. Right? So we can refine it uh, with the just the one condition. And uh, the flows will be exactly the same if you draw the flow chart. Any questions? And uh, we will not ask you to write the shortest version of your code. Right? If you write a long version, it's fine. As long as the logic is correct, no problem with that. Yeah, question? You have a question? No? No question? All right. So let's continue. How about dangling x? Right. Look at this code. Because that if number is greater than nine, then if number is less than 100, we say it is a two digits, right? Uh, this two, dig is two digits is some counting, some counter we defined previously. We want to count how many numbers are one digit, how many, how many numbers are two digits, right? So if it's between nine and 100, we say plus plus two digits, else plus plus one digit. What's the problem here? Based on this uh, intention, right? This else should be paired with this if, right? So it means this part means number greater than nine. This part means number less than nine, but less than equal to nine, nine. So the logic should be correct, right? Yeah, we need to brace this. Yeah, that's right. It's called dangling, right? You need, if you is uh, if you nest the one if inside of this two part and you have another else, but this part don't have an else, like uh, they will pair the else with the nearest if. It will pair with this if. Um, although your uh, it will give you the feeling that this one is this kind of pair, pair but if you format your uh, files, it will give you some output like this one. This one. So it becomes number greater than 100 plus plus one digit. So yeah. it will be wrong. See the difference? So what we should do is, let me see. Let me copy it here. Lacking. Right, this is our initial code. We are trying to pair line five else with line two here. Right. What we are trying to achieve is this. Let me not call it pitfall. Let me call it a number less than or equal to nine, right? This is what we want to achieve. We want to pair this one with this one. But the question is, we have another if they don't have else part. And we write an else, compiler needs to know, does it match with this one or does it match with the previous one, right? Yeah. But indeed, this one matches with this if. So what does it actually do is like this. This number actually means greater than greater than or equal to 100, right? This is the actual meaning because you don't have braces. If you want to do it correctly, you should have braces here, right? Make it a block right here. Then the, this else. In this case, this else will be paired with this if this number will be uh, less than less than nine, or less than or equal to nine, right? 
Any questions on this? Okay, uh, I didn't define it. So normally we define such something like the one digit. Uh, we normally say we want to count how many one digit numbers are there, how many two digit numbers are there. Right? Yeah, this is what we are trying to do. I know we can define another one called a two digit. E I G I T equal to zero. So yeah, it's a variable. So if it's a function call, it should be, uh, it should have parentheses, parentheses. Yes. It's just a variable. Any more questions? Yeah. Okay. If you want the whole code, you need a for loop. You need a loop. That will uh, follow. That keep reading, keep reading numbers, and uh, I I just simplify here. Yeah, I will introduce follow later. You will keep reading numbers, then check is the number between uh, nine to one hundred. Then we increment the two digit counter. Otherwise, we increment the one digit counter like this. Uh, the way and integer, uh, in front of the number. Integers in front, yeah, you should define, yes. You should define the uh, number, the type as integer, or you can do something like the unsigned int, right? And unsigned, yeah, unsigned int, and you can check that it's, uh, it's not a complete code because uh, from now on, maybe we don't have time to show the complete code sometimes. All right, let me jump back. But right. this is about the dangling else. So we say the indentation is means nothing in C++. It means something in Python, right? If you write Python like this, it's correct. It will automatically matching this one with this one. Because Python care about these inventions. Right? As long as you have the same indent, they know they are belongs to the same level. But in C, it's a freestyle, right? You can write any uh, all numbers in just one up. They don't care. So you need to give it some mechanism to do matching. And the key rule is just the matching with the closest in that don't have an else. As long as this one don't have an else, you can match with it. The easiest way to do is using the format tools in your IDEs, you will see the exact matches. And uh, here is how we solve it, right? We just put a brace here so that this if will uh, be ended here. So it becomes a one statement. And then after braces, we know this if will be. Uh, pair with this else. All right, how about some multiple alternatives, right? Assuming you have uh, some scores and you have some, you need to assign grade to your score. Uh, don't worry, it's, it's not the rule for your scores. Okay. If score greater than 90, your grade will be A. If score greater than 80, your grade will be B. If score greater than 70, the word will be C, right? There are sometimes we need to do this kind of work. Then we need a bunch of if, else if, else if, and the last one will be some else. Right? Or you can ignore the last else. Just if, else if, else if, else if, else if. You can write as many else if as you like. And uh, it means it will uh, jump into only one of them. It will not jump into Two of them, it will only jump into one of them. If you write if, else if, else if, in this way. Questions? So all the other grammars are exactly the same. If you need a braces, use braces. If you need um, something inside, 
So there are some other case called this switch statement. Sometimes we call it a case statement. It it is something like this, right? If we want to write it in the if else statement, it will be look like if digit equals to one, do something. If digit e else if digit equals to two, do something. Else if digit equals to three, do something, and so on. Right? It will be a nicer way. It, it, it looks like a nicer, right? Yeah. So we say switch digit. If it's the case of one, we do some work. If it's case of two, do some work. If it's case of nine, do some work. If not belongs to all the previous ones, go to the default one. So this is how we define the uh, switch statement, right? And uh, as you can see here is a break. We will talk about break later. But the break basically means if digit equals to one, you assign digit name to one, then jump out of the switch, the whole block, the switch statement. This break means jump out. If you don't put a break here, right? if you don't have, don't have all the breaks, yeah, it, it will not check, but it will execute all the instructions. Right? When I say digit equals to one, I will run digit name equals to one, then run digit name equals to two, then digit name equals to nine, until the end, if you don't have any break. As long as there's a break, I will jump out of the switch. Yeah, question. How does switch to this uh, number value is in the interval? Okay, uh, there's no interval actually. The only thing you can compare is compare a single integer value. Right. So switch is very limited actually. This is the only case that it can be used. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I mean, uh, you can only compare a single string value with another one. So if it's a if statement, you can say if digit between one and two, between two and three, between one and five, right? You can do something. But in here, you cannot do that. Yeah, let me show you. So we, what we can do is in an if statement, what we can do is if A, um, greater than one and a less than five, right? What we can do is maybe something like see out less than five, right? Else if a greater than five, equal to five and a less than 10. We can see out greater than five, something like this. All right. This is what if and else if can do. You can do on and on and on. But in switch, what you can do is, let me show you. This will be a long one. All right. Switch A. It's one. Do some work. It's two. Do some work. Blah, blah, blah. It's four. Let it be. Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, this one should be equal. Okay. All right. All right. It should be, you should write it in some way like this. So in the if else if statement, you will say if A is between one and five, you say uh, less than five. If it's between five and ten, you can say greater than five, right? 
So it, it else it will be very easy to write. But if we want to convert it into a switch statement, it would look like this. If a is case one, empty, case two, empty, case three, empty, and you will go to case four to output this one. And we said if a is equal to one, we will execute all the instructions until we see a break. Right? We will execute like this, 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 and this until we have a break. So this one and the previous one are exactly the same. But uh, remember, if you keep dot dot dot, doesn't mean dot dot dot. In the real program, you should write case three, right? Let me write the whole one. All right. And similarly, for the remaining part, you can say case five, case six, case seven, case eight, something like that, then output greater than five. So that's the limitation of switch. Yes. So um, what's, what's in the case one? Case one means A equal to one. Case two means A equal to two. Case three means A equal to three. So we can also write case two, case four, case three. Uh, yeah, you can do that. Can you change the order like case three? Yes. Case yeah. It doesn't matter. There is a name, but yeah. is it okay to use char? Yeah, it's okay. A, B. Yes. Anything that's can be converted into integer, it's fine. Oh. If you will be able to understand this, it means you understand the switch statement. All right. Let me maybe it's better to write down the whole thing. Five, six, six, five, six, 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 seven, six, eight. You have another one. It's nine. Greater than five. All right. So switch statements always check equal. Is a equal to one? Is a equal to two? Is a equal to three? Right. Whenever there's an equal, it means the entry entry point of the code block, and it will execute the code line by line until it sees a break. Whenever it sees a break, it jump out of the switch statement. So the whole program. The switch statement are exactly the same as the previous if and else if statement. So yeah. Uh, it can it can as long as an integer. So what is matters is integer. Let me yeah maybe it's confusing. Uh, let's say less than twenty, right? But I need a longer one to write that. Then I can say case 10, case 11, right? Yeah, I use dot, dot, dot. <laughs> you know what that means. Yeah, yeah. All right. Is there any questions on this? So if A is a char of string, you are just transforming to integer. Yeah, yes. If, I write if, if statement in case. Uh, pardon? I wrote if statement. If statement? If, if statement, can I just use the mother block in the case? Yeah, you can do anything in here. You can do, so here is just a statement, right? You can say if. If A equals maybe two, right? You can do some work else. You can do some work, right? So if I want to block a, a new switch in the, the, the new block, I still have to use curly bracket. Yeah, yeah. Any more questions? Yeah.
Yes. We need to list all the possibilities of A unless all the other cases will be dealt with the same function, right? Default. In all the cases that's not listed in the case statement will be go to the default one. So you can say anything else, then this one is the else part, right? Like the final else. If it doesn't match any of this, put it empty. Yeah, that's what it does. Any more questions? Uh, it should be C1. Yeah, yes, yes. For this program, you need to see some number between, uh, if it's between one to nine, it will give some name. If it's greater than 10 or less than zero, it will be empty. So if the case is not true, we will skip the break, right? To go to the next case. Uh, if it's not true, just like if I type in two, right. and it is not correct for case one, right? So it was yeah, this is the entry point, right? It'll start uh, stop on here or stop on one so down. Start from here, anywhere you match, it will start from here. Right? If you match two, start from here. If you match nine, start from here. Is it necessary to put it in bell after the next Yeah, it's always a good behavior to put it in bell. Mm -hmm. yeah. So nine cases, they are uh, working together or one by one? It's not one by one or it, it's just the entry point, right? If it's one, I will enter here. I know I will run all the statements in here until I see a break. As long as there's a break, I jump out. These are just at the entry point, tells you where should you start your execution. So similarly in here, right? If you input number three, then you will start from here and then run your uh, programs one by one until you see a break and we'll jump up. Any more questions? <laughs> yes. If you don't write a break, right? If you don't write a break, if my input is two, I will run the X, run these instructions one by one until I see a break. So it will output two things, output less than one, output greater than one. Yes. So in my input 1.5 is now uh, directly <laughs> Uh, drop into the default. Yes. Yes. Uh, let me see if there's a double comparison. I don't know. I don't remember. I believe. Yeah. I believe only integers are now. Enum. Yeah. Enums are also integers. Char are also integers. So all of them can can work. Right. If you want to compare, for example, if you ask ask the user to see in some char, char A, and then you can say, okay, case, the first one could be is A, right? Is your input is A, is your input is two, is your input is, for example, uh, let me put something here, Q, right? You can do something like this for a characters. We can also do similar things because they can be converted into ASCII code. They are also integers. As long as it can be converted into integers, you can compare using switch statement. But you are not, uh, it's not required to use the switch statement, right? Everything can be done in switch statement. It can be done using get else statement. So the only thing, the important thing you know is the if else statement. And if other people write something like the switch, you should be able to <coughs> understand it. All right, so there are some pros and cons, right? For the switch, switch statement, it's very obvious, right? All the branches tested the same type of values, right? 
for example, for this one, we are testing against the digit. All the numbers are just tested against the digit. So the condition structure are very easy. Digit, digital, digit equals to one, digit equals to two, digit equals to nine, right? So it will be very easy. So this is the approach. It's very obvious. The cause is, the bad part is that the switch statement can only be applied to very narrow circumstances, right? It must be some constant, they must be integers and so on. And uh, yeah, if you, if you want to compare the characters, you can compare characters and this, right? If the input is character one, character two, instead of integer one, integer two. So this will be the switch statement. If you want to do the exercise like this, you should use the else statement, like instead of the switch statement. If you want to compute the text, right? Because every text has some range, right? If it's between zero to 33, uh, 36 thousand, the tax rate will be three percent. And uh, if your input, if your tax income is, for example, in the middle of it, the first part you compute with three percent, second part you compute with ten percent, and so on. Right? This is how we compute the tax. We should use uh, something like if else or something. We can uh, do that. So more important thing is the loops. So branches. Then loops, loops are a block of code that can be performed uh, repeatedly, right? Everything we learned before the loops, that uh, if programming languages don't have a loop, it'll be similar to humans doing, right? The reason because computers are faster because they can do loops. They can do the same blocks of code repeatedly. And uh, how can we define a loop, right? It's a, we say it's a controlled by a condition similar to a branch. It's controlled by a condition that is checked every time when we go through the loop. And uh, we will first learn what does it mean in the while loop. Here is a while loop, right? So we are asking how long does it take to, uh, to make our investment double, right? Assuming we have some rate for example, the rate will be 5% or 3%. We are asking how many years do we need to make the balance double from our initial balance? So this is our question, right? So here is our while loop. While loop has a condition similar to an if else statement, right? If the condition is true, we will do all the uh, instructions inside the block. So if the current balance is less than two times the initial balance. We said balance becomes uh, increased by a rate, right? Then we uh, increment the number of years. So when this while loop, the, this condition is true, we always do the same work yeah. until the balance is greater than or equal to two times initial balance. Then we jump out. Then we can print the year, right? This is the number of years we need to double our initial balance. Assuming we have the rate known, right? Any questions on this? This will be very similar to if statement, right? Let me see if I have the code. Yeah. I have the future value. Yeah, but, but I define a function for it. I will talk about it then later. Yeah. So any questions on this? No? What is I think Ryan would allow function? Oh. Oh, loop and keep looping. Like, yeah, you can make it keep looping. How can I break the loop? Yeah, we have some mechanisms similar to the switch statement. You can break. Whenever you say break, you can jump out of the while loop. Okay. Yeah, question. Break a loop. 
Is there any way to jump out of the loop? Go to. Don't use go to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can use go to to jump out. Yes. And uh, the correct way to control a loop is using this condition. Right. If you define the condition well, you can say something like this. You can say. Uh oh, let me create another one. So we say while loop, right? Here we need a condition. So in this condition, sometimes you can say, okay, how about I set a flag, right? This is a common way to do it. And uh, when some condition happens, some condition happens, da da da. We can set black to be false. Right. So uh, before that, we can set black to be true. Only black to be true. This could be one option to jump out of the loop, right? If you really don't know how to write down the conditions well, you can put a flag here and say, okay, the flag is true initially, then we can keep running, right? When something happens, we can say this one becomes false. Then next loop, this one will be, uh, will jump out of the loop. So this continuous phrase, uh, uh, not, uh, not well. Yeah, it's, it should be inside, inside the phrases of the while loop. Yeah. yeah. If, we, if this condition never happens, it means an infinite loop. Right? This condition is my you might write it wrong, then it will be an infinite loop. You will never know about it. This will be similar to something like the break statement. We will discuss that later. So this is very simple example of while loop. Any more questions? Yeah, about go to. Let me talk more about go to, right? So, uh, in the assembly code, right? People typically write something like this. Uh, this is called a loop. They use a label like this, then say, uh, do some work, right? Do some work. Then we have some conditions. If flag equals to true. We go to loop, then done. Right? You can use a loop, and you can use a go to to write a loop. That's typically the assembly code we do. Right? But don't learn this way. Right? Don't learn this way. So same. this one are exactly the same as the previous one. If a uh, flag is true, we go to loop, then Continue the work. So loop is just a label, label name. You can name it anything you like. Then we, you will go run and run and run until flag becomes false. You keep running. So, so you use the go to to jump out of the loop. Yeah, you can also use the loop to uh, use use the go to to jump out of the loop. Like here, instead of saying flag, you could say go to end, right? Anything you like. And you put some label after saying end is here, right? Do some work. You can also, in the old ways, people typically writing something like this. Because that's when the people, in the old days, people learn C, they also learn assembly. And assembly, typically writing codes like this. Go to some label, go to some label. But in our class, never use go to. <laughs> All right. And also in your project, I, I don't believe there will be any company that would allow go to. Yeah. At least in, in my old company, they don't allow that. It will be a nightmare for people to examine the control flows. Right? You can because you can jump to any place. It's not just the one place, it can jump to any place. All right, that's while. If we look at the control flow graph, it's like this. 
When we go to here, we check if balance is less than two times initial balance. Uh, if it's true, we go uh, this statement, like this statement means add some interest to your balance, then increment your year, then going back again to check if the balance is less than two times the initial balance, then keep on and on and on until this condition is false. We will jump out of the loop. Right? This is the real while loop. Questions on this? No, let me start with some examples. Let me take out of my iPad. Wait. Right. Let's have one question. Wait, let me hide it. Store it with a pen. Okay. How to compute square root of two? Wait, it's not working. It's how can I do it? If it's mirrored in here, it's not mirrored in there. Let me see. It will be quick. it will be quickly synchronized. Right. So your question is how to compute square root of two. You guys, uh, I still remember you guys asked me if the function call right, SQRP give you the number. What would be the number? Is it greater than the initial value or less than the initial value? Right. All right. So let's see how can we do it. Yeah, I cannot synchronize. It will be a problem. All right. Uh, let me use here to draw. Okay, so what we are asking is if we have a function. Wait, is there any way to type? Insert it. Yeah, if we have an fx, f of x, right, equals x square, we're asking what would be the number of x such that x square equals to two, right? Then we can write another function g of x equals x square minus two, right? We're asking when this function will go to zero. That will be exactly the same. So what we can do is we can, all right, let me draw this. Yeah, this is ugly, but anyway, this one is x squared minus two, right? It's x squared minus two. And then here is the point we want to find. Here's the point we want to find. And there's one algorithm in computer science that's used frequently called a binary search. So I will tell you how that works. You don't have to learn anything related to binary search or algorithms. That will be another class. What I want to introduce here is just a how to use follow, right? Assuming we have here is our low 
we call it low. Low, yeah. We have another thing called high. All right, let me go back to text mode. And uh, what we say is G of low is less than zero, but G of high is greater than zero. It's easy to find two points like this, right? You know, zero is always less than zero. If zero put in, the G axis is negative two. If I put a high such, such as two, right? If I put two here, the output is two. So we can initially setting such as low equals to zero, high equals to two. And then because this one function is doing like this, we know our result should be between low and high, right? So we know, let me put here, our x should in, no, I should like this, between low, the range of low and high, right? How can we compute the uh, final result? Binary search. Binary research says we set a new value called the middle. It equals to low plus high divided by two. Right. It means we are finding some points in here. This is our middle. Let's wait. Right. Next, we need to check. Yeah, if G middle is greater than zero or not. Assuming now G middle is greater than zero. Right. We know X should in the range of low to middle. See the loop, right? The loop says we have a range. Then we find out the middle point, check the value of the function, then change the range. And we loop again, right? Next step, middle equals low plus high, then check the G of middle. If it's less than zero, we do another things, right? So if I would ask you this kind of questions, I will not ask you to do binary research for something. I will give you the exact steps and you need to convert these steps into some code, right? And uh, I believe it's a perfect time to take a 12 minutes break. Let's come back at 10.30. <laughs> 